Morning, everybody, and welcome to this Thursday edition of Pray First. It's so good to be with you guys. I love coming to you every day. This is something we've been doing now for about a year and a half. I, can, I can't even believe it's been this long. We started this with a 21-day thing that I wasn't sure that we'd even be able to do for 21 days, and this has grown into such a family, and I appreciate each and every one of you. Those of you who are uh, participants here, maybe first-time viewers, maybe long-time viewers, whatever, we're friends. And we're from all over the country and yes even all over the world so welcome to pray first get in here we're kind of wrapping up today this growing uh stage spirit uh see uh this growing stage series that's easy for you to say evidently my tongue is tied i need more coffee uh today i want you to hashtag live hashtag recorded hashtag shared if um you put this out on your page make sure you make it public i'm going to go ahead and share this out on my page as well and i'm going to uh, I'm going to write in a little something. When you share it, if you would just write a little blurb like into the comment area, uh, your friends will be more likely to look at it. So I'm going to put investing long term. All right. The reason we hashtag live, hashtag recorded, hashtag shared is because this is an interactive thing. And those of you who have seen this in your timeline, in your news feed, maybe a friend called you, texted you, or told you about it, or you heard about it some kind of way, I heard someone say that they were at a restaurant the other day and they heard the table behind them talking about Pray First and they could not believe that we do this every morning. Uh, just random people in a restaurant talking about Pray First. Guys, that's because you share and I appreciate that. When you share it, it reaches not only my timeline and my news feed and my friends, it reaches all of yours. So let's hit the hearts and hit the likes and tell everybody that we are so glad that they are here with us today. We've been talking about Mark chapter 4, Luke chapter 8, Matthew chapter 13, where the parable of the sower and the parable of the seeds are, are, are placed. We've been talking about these because the enemy wants to steal the word from you. The seed is the word. The ground is your heart. The Lord is the sower. The word is the sower. And, and the enemy wants to steal the word from you because when the word gets in your heart, when you hide his word in your heart, not only do you not sin against God, but you produce fruit 30, 60, and 100 fold. I want to ask you a question this morning. I like to ask questions every morning. Have you ever felt disappointed? Have you ever felt disappointed in this life? Have you ever felt disappointed with the results of your decisions? Have you ever felt disappointed with your career, with where you thought you would be at this point in your life? Have you ever felt disappointed by how other people treated you? Have you ever felt disappointed because you thought if you did the right thing, that the right thing would happen? Have you ever felt disappointed that your Sunday school childhood faith uh, wasn't exactly matching your adult um, experiences? Have you ever felt disappointed that the people you trusted and the people that you put your hopes in were not who they claimed to be or who you thought they were? Because sometimes it's that. It's not that these people are claiming something. You just put such high hopes in them and expectations and you've set them on such a pedestal. Have you ever been disappointed that it seems like time is flying too fast and you were going to accomplish this and that, but now it just seems like it's too late for you. I want to explain something to you. All of these disappointments come when eternal beings try to invest in temporary things. There's too many unavoidable pains in this life for us to ignore the avoidable ones. These things happen when we invest too much when eternal people invest too much in temporary things, we get d disappointed because there's there's a timeline here we're trying to get everything done in, and we want to be liked, and we want to be loved, and we want people to think that, you know, we did something important, and that we accomplished something, that we left a legacy. God wants to plant His Word in your heart so that it produces 30, 60, and 100-fold. But we have to have a prepared heart. A prepared heart. What does a prepared heart look like? What does prepared soil look like? What does a good heart look like that is ready to receive the Word of God? Well, we talked about it a couple of days ago. It's a humble heart. We talked about on yesterday that it is a holy heart. For the past two days, we talked about it is a holy heart. Today, I want to talk to you about 
a good heart, a prepared heart, good soil that receives the seed from God's word and produces 30, 60, and 100 fold and can't be stolen. Come here. The seed I'm talking about today falls into ground that will not turn loose of the promises of God. This ground I'm talking about to you today is fertile and the roots can go deep. This ground I'm talking about today is where trees are planted by rivers of living water that no matter what you see around you temporarily, you're in it for the long term. You may be investing small particles and small pieces here and there, but you're not investing for a quick return tomorrow. You're not trying to put $5 in today and retire tomorrow. You're putting investing things in today that will last forever. And this side of heaven, as you look at this temporary life, you may not see its results, but the Word of God always accomplishes what it was sent to accomplish. It will not return void or less than what you put in. It will exponentially increase 30, 60, and 100 fold. Number three, we need a heavenly heart. Number one, a humble heart. Number two, a holy heart. Not perfect and sinless, but set apart. And number three, a heavenly heart. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 15. For thus says the high and lofty one, God, who inhabits eternity. I want you to hashtag eternity. God lives in eternity. God's successes are immeasurable because they are not confined to measurement. <laughs> you see, we measure things by amount, big or small, long or short, inches or feet, years or days. God's purposes are immeasurable because they're not confined by measurement of time and inches and days and years and good or bad or long and short. Thus says the Lord, the high and lofty one who inhabits eternity, heaven, forever, past, present, future. Guys, you and I, through the grace of Jesus Christ, have become eternal creatures. Your success, your full body of work, is not confined nor is it defined by your current lifespan. <laughs> what? That's right. The clock does not run out on you on the second date of your tombstone. <laughs> the resources don't dry up at the end of the month. The ability to do things and accomplish things goes further than you. <laughs> the eternal one who lives in heaven has graced us with eternal life. This world is not our measuring stick. This physical life is not all there is. The accomplishments of our day or the failures or the incompletes of our life are not defining of us. Ooh, <laughs> this world is not our home. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 11. This world is not our home. 1 Peter 2, 11 through 12. And, and the reason this matters is because when you make decisions or you invest in if eternal things Eternal beings, eternal, eternal people like you and I make decisions based on temporary things. We may not live long enough to see 30, 60, and 100 fold. And for those who are God-centered, it doesn't matter. Because you're not living for yourself anyway. You've gotten so close to God that you're willing to give it away. You're willing to invest if it costs you everything. You're willing to go further. Then hoping people will remember. You are willing to give it away for others. Friends, this world is not your home. 
so don't make yourself cozy in it. You see, investing in this temporary life is where you invest in cozy. You invest in comfort. You invest in safe. You invest in, I can't lose this. You invest in getting what's yours and holding on tight. Don't make yourself cozy here. This isn't your home. Don't indulge your ego at the expense of your soul. Remember a humble heart. Do not indulge your ego at the expense of your soul. Live an exemplary life among the natives. Those who this world is their home, live an exemplary life in front of the natives so your actions will refute their prejudice. Then they will be won over to God's side and be there to join in the celebration when he arrives. You will not be able to comprehend. Okay, so here's how, remember the enemy's trying to steal the word from your soil so it won't plant root and grow 30 and 60 and 100 fold uh, production and produce uh, that fruit and, that, and that, that supernatural growth and fruit production. He wants to keep you from being able to comprehend God's word. Okay? So as you read God's word, if you're reading God's word and you're thinking that all God wants to do is bless your temporary life, you've missed it. If you think all God wants to do is keep you healthy and living through this temporary life, you're missing it. You can't comprehend an eternal word with a temporary mindset. When you try to take the eternal word of God and apply it to your measured life, your measured day, your measured successes, your measured hours, your measured fruit, you can't take eternity and measure it with temporary. You will not be able to comprehend God's eternal word if you read it with a temporary mindset. You will not understand the mysteries of the kingdom if you think this is just an instruction book for your lifespan. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary. Hashtag temporary. But the things which are not seen are eternal. Don't measure your treasure on things you see, things you hold. Don't measure your success on things you see and things you hold. We're eternal beings who measure our success based on things you cannot see right now. Treasures that we have stored up in eternity with the holy eternal God, treasures that we've sent ahead of us to God, treasures that we've sent ahead where moth cannot destroy, thieves where moths cannot eat, thieves cannot steal, and rust cannot destroy. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is. Where's Christ? In eternity. Sitting at the right hand of God, set your mind, set your thoughts, set your thinking, set your goals, set your priorities, set your standard, set your gaze, set your milestone set your focus on things which are above where christ is sitting at the right hand of god set your mind on the things above not the things on earth isaiah chapter 55 remember in mark chapter 4 when we're talking about the parable of the seed we're talking about the ground we're talking about seed and we're talking about fruit. In Mark chapter 4, we're talking about the ground, we're talking about seed, we're talking about fruit. Listen to what Isaiah 55, 10 through 11 says. The rain and snow come down from eternity. The rain and snow come down from heaven and stay on the ground. Remember, Mark chapter 4, we're talking about ground, seed, and fruit. The rain in heaven comes down from heaven and stays on the ground, hashtag ground, to water the earth. They cause grain to grow, hashtag grain or hashtag fruit. They cause grain to grow, producing seed for the farmer. We're talking about ground, fruit, and seed. 
They cause grain to grow, producing seed for the farmer and bread for the hungry. We have people who are starving all around us for or us to invest in eternity and not temporary. Listen to what verse 11 says. It is the same with my word. I send it out, God says. And it always produces fruit. Hashtag always produces fruit. What you're doing matters. Your actions, reactions, responses matter. They may not win you the temporary fight. They may not gain you the temporary uh, uh, accolades, success. They may not even be seen this side of eternity. But God's word, when it goes forth, it always accomplishes what it is sent to accomplish. It always produces fruit. It will accomplish all that I want it to, and it will prosper everywhere I send it. Mercy. That's huge. The word produces fruit. What you're doing matters. What people think of you doesn't matter much. What you think of people matters more. God didn't command you to be loved. God commanded you to love. God didn't command you to be understanded, understood. God commands you to understand. God doesn't command you to not be offended. God commands you to not be offensive. When you give your life away, you're going to find that whew, there's a bigger picture. There's a bigger purpose. The word produces fruit. You don't have to. You don't have to. I'm going to produce fruit. I'm going to work harder. No, 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 no. The word produces the fruit. I keep the ground right. I keep the heart right. I work on my humility. I uh, resist my pride. I work on my holy heart. I try to be separate. I demand myself to not react like others react, say what other people say, do what other people do, uh, think like other people think. I, I demand that of my soul. My spirit commands that of my soul. For thus who are led by the Spirit of God, these are the children of God. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 12 and 13. Listen to this, and then I want to pray for you. For you shall go out with joy. <laughs> I love that. You shall go out with joy. You shall go out with joy. <laughs> My closing seconds, I want to go out with joy. My temporary life, when I go out, I, I go out with joy. I go out with, I will be led with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you. And the trees of the field, that's you. The trees of the field, the trees of the field will clap their hands. Instead of, listen to this, instead of the thorn shall come up a cypress tree. You're the trees. You're the cypress tree. And instead of thorns, remember thorns? Go back on my page. And instead of thorns shall come up a cypress tree. What's a cypress tree? A tree that is planted by the water, that is strong, that is stable, that can resist drought because it's there for long term. It can endure temporary droughts for long term life. Instead of a thorn that chokes the word, instead of a thorn that comes up and cripples the word, instead of a thorn that poke, 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 pokes you, up shall come a cypress tree, instead of the briar shall come a myrtle tree, and it shall be to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that you shall not be cut off from God's word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. And the word was God. You shall not be cut off. You will be like a tree planted by rivers of living water. Roadways in the wilderness shall you see. Ways that no one else sees away. 
and rivers in the desert will you see because you are planted in the river of God. Heaven and earth will fade. He's talking about this temporary home will fade, but God's word will remain forever. I want to thank all of you who came out yesterday. I've got one more verse that I just have to read to you. Proverbs 4.23, Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Thank you for everybody who came over to YouTube yesterday. 71 of you came over uh, and joined us at the YouTube channel. Thank you so much for that. Go back and watch that if you have not. Go back and watch this series if you have not. Father, I pray for peace, joy, stability, and immeasurable success as we invest in eternity and not in temporary. Bye, guys. I love y'all. Hit some hearts, hit some likes, hit some lives, hit some recorded, hit some shares. Don't be, don't hold the word like it's, you know, the last, the last seed and the last bread we'll ever get. Share this. Get this to your family and friends. Bring them to pray first. Man, we have a world full of people who need the word. Bye, guys. Love you.